Hey, hello friends and welcome to another session on Gems of Geometry and uh, again as we have been doing so far, we will be discussing another very very important and very interesting theorem. So what is this theorem and uh, after this theorem or rather this theorem becomes the basis for many other theorems like uh, for example what uh, Brahmagupta found out uh, in terms of let's say uh, you know the area of a cyclic quadrilateral. So after this theorem we will see how there are three cyclic quadrilaterals which will be having the same area and that's how uh, it becomes the basis for uh, the very fact that the uh, area of the cyclic quadrangles okay are a symmetric function of their sides. So this theorem which we are going to discuss will become the basic premise for that theorem which was actually uh, given by Brahmagupta. Okay, so let's now talk about this particular theorem here. So in, in this session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct the entire theorem. That means we will be constructing and we will be demonstrating through construction, right? And uh, the construction demonstration would be good enough to prove this theorem as well. So let's begin. So first, let us understand what the theorem is saying. It says any four unequal lengths, each less than the sum of other three will serve as the sides of three different cyclic quadrangles all having the same area. So let's deconstruct it. So basically what it is saying is if A, B, C and D are four lengths such that A plus B plus C plus sorry A plus B plus C is greater than D. If this is true for any choice of A, B and C. So don't, don't just think that I am taking A, B and C. So hence it should be A, B and C, the first three only. No. So any combination, any three of these four lengths you pick up and uh, if the sum is more than the fourth one, then what is what does it say? These four segments can be of or can be laterals or sides of three different cyclic quadrilaterals and all will be having the same area that's what we, we are going to establish here I hope you understood so basically let's say if I'm drawing a rough sketch here so let's say if this is a b c and d and let's say there is a there is a circle which passes through all the vertices all the vertices let's say okay so in that case they're saying within, within the same circle with the same a b c and d we will be having three different cyclic quadrilaterals. How? Let us see that. So let me first clear this canvas. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, use this GeoGebra tool to draw and demonstrate. Okay. So what I'm going to do is first let me take a circle. Okay. So I'm taking uh, let's say this point here as the center and let me take a radius of 5. Okay. So this is the circle and let me rename this to O. So our standard uh, so our standard uh, center's name, okay, so rename it to O, okay, here it is. Now let us take four points on these, on this circle. So first point is, let's say this one A, second point is, let's say this one B, and let's say this is third point C, and let's say this is D. So now all these three points, or sorry, four points are on the circle, and now we are going to draw a quadrilateral or quadrangle we will join all these but while drawing what i am going to do is i am going to you know demonstrate that particular quadrangle as sum of two triangles for what reasons it will be clear a little later so let me draw one uh, polygon or triangle a b c so this is one right and then the other one is a c d right so can you can clearly see that a b c d becomes the cyclic quadrilateral in this case and a c is the diagonal now what i'm going to do you have to pay a little bit attention here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to reflect one of the two triangles so you can see this cyclic quadrilateral is made up of two triangles a b c and a c d isn't it now i'm going to first create a mirror uh, which is perpendicular to this diagonal and then I'm going to reflect the triangle ACD on that. What do I mean? Let me do that and show it to you. So first of all, I'm going to take a perpendicular line. So how to draw a perpendicular line? I'm just taking this 
arbitrary point okay and from this point g on this line i am drawing a perpendicular so this line the new line which has generated has been generated is perpendicular to the the diagonal ac why now i will be reflecting the triangle acd about this line so let me reflect that so i am selecting uh reflect this part this triangle and this is the mirror let's say so here is the reflection so do you see there is a reflection of a so let me just zoom out so a c d and a dash c dash d dash is the reflection of triangle a c d correct so since it is a reflection don't you think that these two triangles which one a c d a c d and a dash c dash d dash are congruent right so they are the simple reflection so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to translate this triangle back to its original diagonal so let's say i am coinciding a dash to c dash and a to c okay right so don't you think the quadrilateral there are two quadrangles now what all so let me just uh, clear the clutter here so there are two points so two points a and c dash are coincidence and coincident and here c and a dash are coincident isn't it so the two triangle part is clear to you i believe let me just uh, take this off so this will not create any hindrance in understanding okay so let me just zoom it in and yeah so i think now it is clear so what i have done is i have reflected one of the triangles about its you know uh, the perpendicular line to the base okay so you know uh, that triangle a b a d c a d c is reflection so let me just highlight this so this is a b and c its reflection is a dash d dash c dash so both of them are congruent anyways so if both of them are congruent that means their area is same so don't you think that we have two cyclic quadrangles now which one so i'm writing them here let us say a b c and d dash or first a b c d and a b c and d dash both are having same area right both are having same area area and in fact if this side was let's say a this side was b this side was c and this side was let's say d of the first quadrangle a b c d now on the other side this one will be c and my friends this is d d dash a dash is d because of the congruence principle simply so you can see there are four values of or rather there are four lengths a b and c and d and they are constructing two cyclic quadrangles with the same area right why is the area same because the two quadrangles are made up of same constituent triangle so hence areas are same right so this is what we have obtained so at least two quadrangles definitely are there which are having same set of a b c d sides and which are having same area now what about the third one so how do we get get the third one so what do we do so let us first clear this you know whatever we have marked on the screen so that becomes easy for us to understand you keep in mind what are a b c and d okay so i have cleared it out okay so these two quadrangles are equal in area with the same sides that we have proved now what i'm going to do is so earlier i took the diagonal a and c ac right now i'm going to take this diagonal or i'm going to make another polygon look here so b c d and b back okay so this is another polygon and now let me uh, switch off the first reflected one so this was the first reflected one so let me yeah switch it off and i have uh, made another diagonal like that and let me take another point again so let me say this is another point and i'm going to make a line perpendicular to this diagonal bd passing through h why because i'm basically creating a mirror okay so let me draw a perpendicular from h perpendicular to this line bd okay now that means i can reflect this triangle about this new uh mirror so to say right so what i'm going to do is i am going to reflect this triangle about this one 
fantastic so i got a reflection of b c d as b dash c1 dash and d1 dash okay so i hope this is clear and i'm going to do the same thing what am i going to do i'm going to shift or translate this this triangle back to this this circle right so i'm just fitting it in here see perfect oh but it actually was uh you know so the choice of point was not that great so i have to change that because it is exactly matching yeah so i'm not getting two different things so i have to just repeat it so not no worries so what i'll do is i will just um uh, delete this part i don't know, need this one so i have to basically change the this is because of the uh configuration so that so the two tri triangles basically coincided so hence what i'm going to do is I'm going to shift this point okay or uh, let's say like that yeah that in that case uh mostly i will be getting a different triangle altogether okay now what i'm going to do is again i am going to take a point another point and from this point h i'm going to drop a perpendicular on this line perfect so i draw i did that and i'm going to take a reflection of any of the two triangles so i can take either this one or that one so let me take the bottom one so i'm going to reflect this one about this one perfect and now i'm going to move this back to so let me move this triangle new triangle which i generated which is reflection back to yeah now this will make some sense okay so here is that guys okay so let me just declutter it a bit uh, let me take it away it is not required anymore and these points let's say this is c1 dash this is c so i hope this is clear so how many quadrangles can you see so let me just take it away as well so you can see third quadrangle being generated and i hope you understood that you know um uh, this will also be in this this area will also be same what area i'm talking about so let me open it up once again so i'm saying uh okay before that let me just declutter it once more here are few points which are coincident so let me take it here so these are all same coincident points this one also okay yes okay now what i'm saying is if you see again a uh, triangle b c d is congruent to triangle b dash c dash 1 and b or d dash 1 whichever way you want to take because these are coincident points right look at the figure again b c d this is one triangle and i reflected this triangle about that mirror if you remember and then the reflected triangle was b c1 dash and d so these two this one so these two triangles are so this one so i'm basically saying this triangle and this triangle and sorry for the bad drawing guys so let me redraw it once again so let me take another color so that becomes easier so this triangle this one this one this one and the other one let me take this color now this one these are congruent isn't it these are congruent because they are reflection of the same triangle okay so since they are congruent then if i add this particular area to both of them i'll get the same area and uh, if you see the sides are same so if this was a this was b so uh, this was c let's say and this was d so a and d stays the same so in the in the next diagram or when we reflect it this becomes b and this becomes c isn't it so the sides a b c and d are still the same and the area of the new quadrangle which quadrangle so a b c1 dash and d area of this quadrangle is equal to area of which one uh we can say b or a b c and d that was the parent parent or the original quadrangle isn't it now let us see all the three together for that what i need to do is i need to just clear this off so that becomes easier for you to see all of them together in one frame okay so now i'm going to switch on the uh the triangle which i had switched off earlier so let us see so let me show the object so this one 
okay so now all of them in the same frame can you see the three quadrangles three quadrangles clearly one is a b c d a b c d the parent one first one then i had reflected this triangle a c d isn't it i had reflected a c d and got a c d dash right so the two then let me write all the three quadrangles and you can view it and you can also analyze from your end so i am saying area of quadrangle a b c d the original one is equal to area of quadrangle a b c d dash because of the reflection thing and the same thing is area of the same a b c d from here if you see here you see you see i can write that as a b c1 dash d okay so there are three quadrangles with the same area and also all of them had sides a b c and d isn't it so this was a and let us say uh, the original one so this was b and let us say this was c and this was d the original right so the same a b c d can be a is same now this b comes here because of reflection and also um and this is c so this is c this one okay and what about d so if you look at it d happens to be this one so this side is also d and this side this one a d dash is same as c okay so you can see all the four quadrangles have a b c and d as the sides okay a b c and d as the sides so right so sides are need not be in the same order but sides are same as in they have the similar segments or same segments in all the quadrangles as well as we proved that the area is also equal because for area we just you know uh, cut the diagonal into two pieces along the diagonal oh, sorry cut the quadrangle into two pieces along the diagonal and just reflected one of the part by 180 degrees right and then so area has to be same and the sides are same so this is what uh, we wanted to prove that if there are four unequal lengths and each less than some of the other three then all four of them can form three different cyclic quadrilaterals or quadrangles with the same within the same circle with the same area right so now we have proved it i hope you like this one so let us now go a deep a little bit more deeper into different theorems related to quadrangles and especially cyclic quadrangles thank you